Hello there, my quilting friends. How are you? I'm Susan Smith. You are in my studio, Stitched by Susan, and I'm quilting today on this lovely, multicolored, very scrappy patchwork quilt. This is made by a client who has become a friend. She's in her 80s. Her name is Dorothy, and she does a lot of these scrappy quilts, and they're always so fun and so interesting to quilt over. So let's see, let's wait for a few more people to get joined before we dive into the thick of things. Where are you all tuning in from? I love to know where you're watching from. I am in Eastern Washington State and we're having a mixed day today. We've had clouds and a little bit rainy and windy and right now it's sunny over my shoulder as you can see. So let's see, still waiting for a few more people to get on. Oh, there's my husband watching from across the room. Yes, indeed he is, he gets to be live. Debbie is in Trimble, Missouri. People must be busy today. There's not very many on live. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started then. Folks can always, of course, watch this after the fact. Oh, here's a few coming in. It was just uh, YouTube is all it was, trying to get its act in order. Nancy, Judy, another Susan, Sue Sews. Great. Okay, there's quite a few here now, so we're gonna dive right in. So I wanna to talk today just a few minutes about bearding. You may have heard that term before or maybe not, but basically what it is is when you're quilting on something and on the back side of the quilt, you're getting little fibers showing through of the batting. And it's typically only visible when your backing is dark. This one is not particularly dark for an example, but it was small enough to hold up. But often you'll just see a few little strands of white or cream colored fibers and that's your batting coming through. And, you know, there are various ways that you can control it. I'm going to show you one particular one today, but various things like perhaps using a smaller needle size, perhaps just a fresh needle will help to not punch those fibers through. But when you are working on something that's dark, as this sample was, um, usually you're working with a dark thread as well and usually a dark backing. And so the tendency then is for any of those fibers from the batting to really show through. And the reality is if you're stitching an entire queen size quilt and it's got a couple hundred thousand stitches on it, it's pretty well impossible to have um, a perfect, and perfect enough needle hole that that never happens. It just does happen. You're dealing with fibers, you're dealing with pushing, 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 pushing through. Like I said, a couple hundred thousand times. So it's pretty much 100% guaranteed it's going to happen on a quilt like that, no matter what kind of precautions you take. So this is my favorite way of dealing with it. And Dorothy's quilt that I have loaded today is the perfect example. You can see how her front is almost entirely colors. There's the odd piece like this one that is kind of a white on white. There's another one. They're quite small. Those are two inch squares, but 99%, 98% of the quilt top is colored. And you can see her backing up here. It's also black or dark with deep colors on it. So my favorite solution is to use black batting. Let me see if I can get it to where you can see it. There you go. And if you watched my little short yesterday on my batting storage, you saw that I actually have a roll of black and I keep that in stock. Now, not everyone does. You might not quilt as many quilts as I do, but I suggest that you keep on hand then at least one prepackaged piece of black batting just for such an occasion. So I will use it. The quilt backing does not even have to be black or that dark, but anything that's darker than medium, so denim blues or sage or khaki greens, or even, you know, browns or deep taupes, any of those colors. And the way that I kind of run a test is I put my black batting on a surface, maybe my ironing board, and I lay my quilt top on top. And then I see, does that batting sort of change the colors of the fabrics? So for example, in these little white squares, it does show through just a smidge in those. It makes them look less crisp and less white. But really, across this quilt top, you don't necessarily want crisp and white, so that's not an awful thing, and it's very tiny. But in terms of the rest of all the fabrics, the black does not affect how they look at all. So that's kind of my measuring stick. If the black does not adversely affect the colors of my fabrics, black it is, because now I, I'm assured that even though I'm still probably going to have a few fibers poking through, they're not going to show at all because it's black, because it's dark. Um, I've even gone so far, this is just a personal 
experience story. Um, I did a quilt for a client one time that was almost all black. All the background was and the underneath, the backing was. And she had kind of inset segments of flying geese that were a, they were a taupe color. The problem was they were very thin, very sheer fabric. So when I laid that quilt top over the black batting, you could see that black kind of shining through. So my fix was, and the reason I did this, because I thought to myself, I'm juggling here now, the unpleasantness of it showing through versus the real unpleasantness of white fibers from the batting bearding through that quilt top. That's a nuisance. So what I did is I actually cut pieces of unbleached batting and put it behind the flying geese. So they were just, they were sections about six inches wide in the width of the quilt. And those areas actually had double batting and it was custom quilting. So quilted those flying geese, quilted those stripes into place and then had black batting underneath. And it kind of solved the both problems in what I thought was the least painful way. So a few ways you can work around with that. But I just thought if you've never used black batting before, don't throw that out as a bad idea. It's a pretty good one actually. And not only, as I said, for black quilts, but for any deeply pigmented quilt, anything darker than a medium, it works really well on. Let's see if any comments are coming in. Do, 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 do. Oh gosh, lots of you, great. Connecticut, Alberta in a thunderstorm. Wow, sunny South Carolina. We're getting all kinds of weather today. Hello from Indiana, windy, sunny Minnesota, Lakeville, Minnesota, Fort Worth, Texas, Parump. Hello from Ohio, Pine Haven, Wyoming, Northeast Ohio, and we have flurries. Oh gosh, I'm grateful I don't have any of those. Catherine's waving, Mendy, hi from Alabama, Northwest Pennsylvania, that's Teresa, Aaron in Ohio, Sue Sos. When you're not quilting for yourself and, and not filming, is there ever a time? No, I'm ju just kidding. I do quilt lots of times when I'm not filting, filming. Um, ha oh, hang on a sec here. Lost my comments. Uh, do, 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 do. How do you prefer to have your lighting set up? I think I showed this the other day, but I'll show you again quickly too. I do have overhead lights in the room. And my Bernina machine has really great LED lights in the throat of the machine. And I actually have them turned off now because on film it, it really produces a white glare. But they're super bright and they light up my quilting area beautifully. But often I prefer to have my room bright as well because I might be marking somewhere else or you know who knows what. So I'm gonna tip my camera up and show you my fancy dancy Costco shop lights. Can you see that? You can see a lot of the camera equipment too, the rails that the cameras hang on when we are filming. So these two lights, and they're just a line, they kind of go over the top of my quilt frame. And my husband hung them, and they're inexpensive shop lights, and they have a very nice white um, daylight-like light, and I like them very, very well. They do cast a shadow on my face when I'm filming, so be it. You can't have everything all at the same time, can you? You can try, but. Um, Grant in Temesco Valley, California. Barbara in Australia. Awesome. Cindy in Iowa. I always get notified late. I'm not sure why, Cindy. Today, I didn't give a whole lot of advance notice when I scheduled this live. I usually try and do it longer than 10 or 20 minutes, but today it was pretty short. Um, Michelle in Indiana. Sleet here today. Oh, yikes. Donna in Saskatchewan. Joan in the UK. Sue Sos. I didn't even know batting came in colors. I... Don't know that it comes in color colors, or at least I've never purchased it, but what the things that I see typically are white or bleached batting for your white, whitest of fabrics, and then unbleached, which is what I typically use, um, and even warm and natural, it's even a little deeper, sort of creamy, tanny, natural color, and then the black. Those are the most common ones. Um, Debbie is asking, do you ever use black lights? I have Debbie, but typically I have not found them to be helpful. I either use a well-lit room or if I have really busy prints or something that is particularly difficult to see my quilting on, I will actually turn out all room lights, all machine lights, and I'll just shine a side lamp from the side. I've seen people that have a little LED, LED light on the side of their machine kind of serves the same purpose. And you're almost quilting by shadow, by casting a light across. Personally, I do not find that black light really helps me with visibility. That's personal preference. I know some people love them, so. 
Cassandra in Texas, Michael in Portland, Oregon, and Connecticut. <laughs> Dave, that's my husband. Bearding is taking on a whole new meaning for me now. <laughs> yes, that is bearding. Um, Carol is asking, is your sample freehand or your machine program? Where did my sample go, Carol? Here's my sample. It is freehand. Can you see that? And I'll just take this moment to tell you about something else today. Enrollment is open right now for my freehand quilting masterclass. And this is one of the designs that is included in that masterclass. There's just over 30 designs. So in this online course, um, first off, it is pre-recorded. So the modules are released to you on a schedule, but you can watch them whenever you want and they never expire after they're released either. So you can come back and you can dip and pick and choose and watch them however you want to. But these designs are both um, taught step-by-step -step and demoed to you to quilt them. And also I focus really heavily on uh, practice methods. So how to elevate your skill, how to really get control of your machine and precision in your quilting. And also the idea that if you want to be a freehand quilter, you want to create your own original designs. So how in the world do you take the idea of a Paisley design and create something that you can remember and quilt over and over and not get yourself into a corner on a quilt? So all those mechanics are included in the class as well. If you want more information on that, just go to sign up stitchedbysusan.com. I've got a landing page there that's got all kinds of information about the class, frequently asked questions, a detailed syllabus with what is in each module and what types of designs are in there. Um, someone was just emailing me today and asking, could they have pictures of some of the designs so that they would know if they're different from the designs they already know? Easiest way to have a look at the designs would be to go to my Pinterest account, so it's stitched by Susan, I'm the same name everywhere. And I have a board there called My Gallery Edge to Edge. And most of what you see in that gallery is in the masterclass. Everything in the gallery is my freehand edge to edge work, but most of those designs I have um, built into the masterclass. So that gives you a good idea of what's in there and a good sampling. So yeah, enrollment is open. Uh, tomorrow evening it closes. So that is just open this week. And um, like I said, there's frequently asked questions there on my website, but you're also welcome to email me, info at stitchedbysusan.com if you have some specific questions that aren't answered there. I'd love to try and answer those for you. So I'm gonna get back to quilting. I am quilting kind of an all over uh, paisley design, like about mm, three inch paisleys, not this fancy, not this shapely, more of a uh, teardrop type paisley all over this printed quilt. Cause of course the quilting's not really showing. I just want some lovely texture over the whole thing. So hoping to get that done in the next mm, half hour or so. So I'll get back to quilting, whatever you're doing today. I hope you enjoy it thoroughly and I will talk to you again tomorrow.